Hello, it's David here. The Personal Protective Equipment, or PPE, shortage is a massive crisis affecting our entire NHS and care providers. In this special edition of the Leader Coronavirus Daily, we've spoken to some of a small but growing army of volunteers who are using 3D printers to do what they can to help out. Please do subscribe to the podcast and give us a rating. Now, from the Evening Standard in London, I'm David Marsland, and this is the Leader Coronavirus Daily. Let me start by addressing the issue uppermost on people's minds, personal protective equipment, or PPE. In his latest press conference, Chancellor Rishi Sunak got straight to the point. This is an international challenge that many other countries are experiencing. Alongside the efforts of British businesses and our embassies around the world, we are working hard to get the PPE our frontline NHS and social care staff need. PPE is the gowns, the masks, the gloves, the things that guard medics from contagious diseases like COVID-19. There isn't enough of it in the UK. And although Government Minister Simon Clarke's been doing interviews telling the country they won't run out, people in hospitals say they already have. Hello, my name is Libby Nolan. I'm a nurse and a shop steward for Unison at Swansea Bay Health Branch in Wales. Doctors and nurses are scared that they will have to be put in a position of choosing who we can save and who we can only give comfort to. We also know that some of us may not make it out the other side alive. At the end of last month, Libby Nolan appealed directly to businesses and individuals to help the NHS across the country get PPE because she says the government couldn't provide it. I don't need to remind you that we also have families where mums and dads and we would like to return to our families at the end of this, unscathed. I promise you today we will do our best for you and by you. But we need your help to do that. That was March 27th. This was March 28th. Hi guys, Um, I'm sorry to be recording this from my bed, but I'm not very well. Uh, I am sorry, breathless. Within 24 hours, the nurse from Swansea was in bed suffering COVID-19-like symptoms. The disease moves fast, but when a call for help is made, so do people. This is um, this is a classroom here in the school, uh, just a normal technology classroom, laptops in the corner, notice boards and so on. Down here, we're cutting the screens. Michael Noonan is a design and technology teacher in London. His school, like all the others, is closed. And that's a lot of equipment lying around in classrooms all over the country. Equipment that can be put into use for the NHS. These two are about to kick off polyethylene terephthalates. And as if it heard me, there's one of them getting underway. Using 3D printers, he's making plastic face shields. There it is, just laying out its base layer. We call that bed adhesion, so that what we're printing sticks to our printing bed. This is what's called a fused deposition modeling printer. So essentially what's happening is it's taking almost like a traditional printer. This reel of plastic is our ink. It's feeding it up through a big series of tubes here. Uh, A little feeding wheel there, a Bowden tube, the plastic tube there, down through our heated head. And this is the job in progress. Michael and his volunteer team, including some pupils, can make around 30 products a day. There are 1.6 million NHS staff working in hospitals around the UK. But Michael is not alone. So 3D Crowd UK is a volunteer group uh, that kind of banded together when, you know, when uh, the pandemic started and we heard that uh, a lot of our, you know, people on the front line need uh, PPEs and we are focused on producing face shields for, uh, for them. Jen Asher is one of the founders of 3D Crowd, a collective of volunteers making PPE for the NHS. In three weeks, it's gone from a handful of people to more than 7,000. We initially targeted to produce 80,000 face shields. So we have delivered 39,000 plus to around 90 uh, NHS trusts. And we're shipping, I believe, around 20,000 visors uh, to our makers uh, across the UK so that they can put the whole thing together. 
and deliver them to uh, local uh, GPs who have placed orders uh, on our site, uh, GPs or, or care homes or any other establishment where you know, they need to protect uh, their staff. We're a healthcare firm. We've got a home care provision and a nursing home. And we've got about 500 and odd staff between those both provisions. Um, and we're having a lot of problems with BPE. Stephen Trowbridge runs a private care provider service in Swindon. His 500 staff go through three to 4,000 masks a week, working with some of the area's most vulnerable people. And they're having to compete with the NHS to get supplies. We call it the loop of doom, is the name that's been given in the industry. We're told by the government um, that we need to use our normal suppliers for all equipment, which we do at first hand. We contact the suppliers, we put our orders in. The suppliers then will contact you just before dispatch is what's been happening with the, the, the fact that the order has been cancelled in preference for the NHS to purchase the equipment on orders of the government. His solution is to create his own supply line, 3D printing some equipment himself and getting help from volunteers for the rest. They're doing all this in their own time and um, if I'm honest, without them doing that, we couldn't afford to do what we're doing. Um, I've invested around £2,000 in 3D printing machines at the moment. Um, last month I spent around £40,000. Frames, protective eyewear, and they're now stacking aprons. There is more PPE coming. London Fire Brigade's been drafted in to deliver to NHS services and mortuaries in the city. And Rishi Sunak is promising the government's bringing in as much as it can from other countries. We are receiving shipments of PPE regularly from suppliers in the UK and abroad. We're working to resolve the Turkish shipment of PPE as soon as possible, following some unexpected delays at the weekend. We have unloaded a shipment of 140,000 gowns from Myanmar. And we are, of course, continuing to pursue every possible option for PPE procurement. After this whole thing is over, we need to do a massive overhaul and they need to get some proper engineers in government that know what is needed in industry and get kids doing the right stuff at school as just as soon as possible. Ben Edmonds is an engineer who's been independently and voluntarily making PPE for care workers. He says the UK should not be in a position where it has to rely on other countries to help its vital health workers. Four years, design technology has been sidelined in schools. There are schools that have sold their department. They've sold all of their equipment. They're not doing design te technology anymore. And what is happening right now, right in this moment, all the DT teachers across the entire country are mobilizing. They're going back into their schools. They're firing up the 3D printers. They're firing up the laser cutters and they're making PPE for our frontline staff. But this country was founded on innovation. We changed the face of the entire world with our innovation and our problem solving, and we don't do any of it in schools. The 3D printers firing up in classrooms can't alone solve the PPE problem. Volunteers also can't be expected to dip into their pockets to make the products forever. 3D Crowd estimates its members have spent £70,000 in the first month. It set up a GoFundMe campaign for donations. But the spirit in which these teachers, their pupils, the engineers and others are throwing themselves behind the NHS is one of those things that's helping drive the doctors, the nurses, the care home workers and hospital staff. At a time when the UK is cheering for the NHS, this is a moment when the NHS, like nurse Libby Nolan from her sickbed, gets to applaud back. I just want to say thank you so much. You're incredible. I was talking to a nurse just now who's crying on the phone because she's scared. <sighs> Sorry. She's scared to go to work because she doesn't have any protection that she trusts. So I've shown her a picture of what is coming. And I said that I will certainly make sure she has one. Thank you. You're an amazing bunch. Please, please carry on being amazing. Health workers' lives depend on you, really, um, and people like you. And that's the Leader Coronavirus Daily. You can keep up with all the latest COVID-19 developments with the Evening Standard's live blog, which you'll find at standard.co.uk. And we also have morning briefings available at 7am through your smart speaker. Just ask for the news from the Evening Standard. This podcast is back tomorrow at 4pm.